So our bodies are covered in microbes, and whether you like it or not, they're all over you. They're on your skin, on your insides, on your outsides, and pretty much everywhere you look. When you think of these overall, uh, as a collection, we call all these microbes the human microbiome. So our microbes are very different in the different locations. So the microbes in my gut are different than the microbes on my skin, which are different than the microbes on my mouth, which kind of makes sense because they're all very different environments. And they all play unique uh, roles in each location. So actually, microbe cells outnumber human cells 10 to 1. So in reality, in some ways, only, you're, you're really only about 10% human. If you talk about genes, uh, they outnumber us 100 to 1. So when we think about microbes, we sometimes think of microbes as being bad. You know, the reason we have antibiotics, the reason we wash our hands with antibacterial soap, and the reason we cover our mouths when we cough. Uh, but the majority of our microbes are actually good, and they're here for a reason, and they uh, are here to keep us healthy. So our diversity is also affected by the choices we make uh, in life. So industrialized nations and uh, research is starting to, to come out to see that they're about a third less diverse in their microbiome than uh, less developed nations. Now, pregnancy and birth is a huge area where research is happening in this field. So in the womb, a baby's for the most part sterile. Uh, the basic, the first time that they, they, get, uh, they get any kind of microbiome is, when, is by their method of delivery. So uh, the environment that you're born in and, and the way that you're born is, plays a huge role in your microbiome. So if you're born vaginally, generally speaking, you develop a microbiome that very closely reflects your mother's birth canal. Uh, this lasts for about three years of life. If you're born by C-section, it's turning out that your microbiome in your gut uh, reflects that of skin, um, not necessarily your parents. So what all this means, we're not necessarily sure. When you're, when you're, being, when you're born and you're developing, uh, your immune system's figuring out what's good and what's bad and research is being done to try to figure out what all this, is, what all this means. So some researchers suggest that uh, it plays a huge role in non-communicable disease, things like obesity, things like asthma, allergies, uh, but it's all really new and no one's necessarily completely sure. Uh, one thing to be aware of is C-sections are increasing around the world. So in some countries and in some uh, areas of the world, 50, even 90% of births are happening by C-sections. So uh, this is an area that could be important uh, as, as more and more is learned about it. So some of this has even led researchers to make some pretty bold moves. Uh, there's something going on called seeding, and there's actually government-funded research that's supporting it. Uh, basically what happens in seeding is uh, a baby that's being born by C-section, the mother will have a swab inserted into her birth canal during the procedure, and the first thing that hits that child is the, uh, the swab, and thus seeding the baby with its natural microbes. This is usually the part my wife starts to shake her head. <laughs> uh, but seeding or not, uh, there's other things you can do to kind of increase your child's micro natural microbiome. Things like breastfeeding, things like direct skin-to-skin -skin contact, and even uh, considering uh, the use of antibiotics is, are all things you can consider. Uh, so it's getting cheap and easy to get this information. So right now I could take a swab of myself, send it in for less than 100 bucks, get an idea of what my gut or any other area of my body or yours microbiome looks like. Uh, there's even products coming out uh, like probiotic baby formulas. There's even prebiotics for babies, which a prebiotic is something that the baby can't digest but is only in place for the uh, microbes to thrive and live off of. So we pass a lot down to our kids, not just our good looks and our fashionable sense of style, but also our DNA and our microbiomes and the choices that we make, uh, make have large effects on possibly their future health. So sometimes we think of germs as a bad thing and a negative thing, uh, but it may be time for us to shift our thinking and embrace what germs are and what they do for us. But one thing to remember is a lot of this research is new, uh, and, it's, and it's something that time still needs to figure out. 10, 20 years ago, this knowledge wasn't even around. Uh, but as it develops, stay on point, keep reading articles, and you'll learn more, and hopefully be a part of the conversation. If this kind of stuff is something that interests you and you want to learn more, uh, I invite you to join our meetup group, the Consumer and Personal Genomics Meetup Group, where we talk about the way that genetics and, uh, and all this kind of stuff is changing the world around us. I'm David McAndrew, and I thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.